I want to turn back to what is going on in Egypt. As you saw, things are escalating there in the streets. Let's turn to Michelle Dunn, who's a senior associate at Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Uh, Michelle was part of a group that met at the White House on Monday, offering advice on Egypt. And Michelle, uh, you know, we're watching these pictures. These are live right now about what is going on in the streets. Uh, some violent reaction to Mubarak not stepping down any earlier than September. Uh, what do we do here? Well, the, the problem is that the longer this situation goes on in Cairo, uh, the more difficult it's going to be. Uh, as we see now, uh, we see these so-called pro-Mubarak demonstrators. Now, you know, it's difficult to get a handle on exactly what's going on, but I will say the Egyptian state has shown in the past its ability to mobilize people like this. For example, they have over a million security officers. Mm -hmm. So these demonstrators may well be people who were mobilized by the state to go in and to try to sort of sow confusion and frankly break up the peaceful and massive nature of the demonstrations so far. So this is really turning into a more ugly situation here it, it, and it, it, it raises the stakes for the United States on how to deal with this. It, it does because as I mentioned you were there at the White House on Monday certainly uh, I'm sure the atmosphere was tense. Uh, what do you think the White House now must do? President Obama made a statement last night uh, in which he said, you know, the, the transition in Egypt must become, must uh, start now. Uh, I, I think that was a signal that, you know, without, without saying so too directly that what President Mubarak has offered so far is inadequate to address this situation. Uh, the, the demonstrators want him to leave office right away. They're calling for a massive demonstration tomorrow, Friday, mm -hmm. saying that's the decisive day. Uh, now, so far, uh, there have been a few hundred people killed in these demonstrations, but mm. in general, they haven't been too violent. But now we're looking at the possibility of things getting really ugly. So then this is this makes all the more important the role of the military there in Egypt, does it not, Michelle? The military is absolutely the key actor here, and the military has been hedging its bets a bit. Uh, they've been expressing some solidarity with the demonstrators, a commitment not to fire on them, uh, and have even acknowledged that their grievances are legitimate. The military's but, main, in, main interest is stability in the country. Well, can the military force Mubarak to resign earlier than he stated? They probably can if they decide that uh, that is the only way out, that that's the only way to restore stability in the country. I mean, they've been very loyal to Mubarak. They have no desire to get rid of him. But I think ultimately, if they have to choose between restoring stability to the country and Mubarak, they'll choose the former. Uh, at what point do you think we may reach that, reach that? Because right now we're seeing people on the streets. As I mentioned, this is live. I mean, I don't know what they're throwing, but, you know, there's, there's people throwing objects. Uh, you can visibly see that this at any moment could escalate into something much more ugly. Uh, I mean, it seems that the time is of the essence now for them to step in. Does it not? Yeah, I, th I think we're going to, we're, it's, it's going to be decisive within a few days. I don't think we're looking at something that's going to play out over weeks or months, but rather, rather hours and, or, or a few days. And if this does escalate, what's the danger that it will, in fact, have a spillover effect throughout the Middle East and particularly to the American allies? Well, we see already that some of the other governments uh, in the region are trying to take rapid steps. Uh, it was very striking that the Yemeni president just announced, he's been in office as long as Mubarak has, mm. that he, he is going to leave office. He had been intending to try to stay longer, that when his term is over, he's going to leave. Uh, the Jordanian king has changed his cabinet and promised reforms. So, you know, we're seeing some of the Arab leaders try to take steps to preempt uh, these kind of large demonstrations in their own countries. Michelle, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for staying with us as we're watching this uh, incredible footage. Michelle Dunn uh, of Carnegie Endowment for International Peace.